Hey, what's up everybody? Hope you're having a good day. Today we're gonna to talk about the new jitter node in Redshift and a really nice way to use it. So I have this camera in the scene and this is from our collection of free elements over at the Pixel Lab. We have over 400 models and materials that are completely free. Just sign up for the email newsletter and you can get access to these. So we have this camera model downloaded and it's put into a cloner with nine copies. Let's say that we wanna add a really nice color palette to all these different individual pieces. If you look at the camera, it is broken down into all kinds of different elements and we wanna color these all a different texture, but we don't wanna go in here and individually texture all of them because it will take way too long. So previously what people would do was use a color user data node. So if you take a color user data node, you can pipe that into the color. If we go to our color user data node and under attribute name, we can change the preset to MoGraph index ratio. And it's gonna give them all a different index color and a different color based on that. We could also go to our objects and go to geometry ID color. And every piece in here, which has a different geometry, is going to be given an ID and a random color. So this in theory is really great. You can't play with any of the colors inside of this color user data node. All you can do is give it an attribute, but what you can do is add a ramp. So let's just throw a ramp in here really quickly and under ramp, let's load a preset and we'll just pick one of these presets just to demonstrate. So here's how you would add a random color to all the different pieces of geometry. So this in theory is really good. However, if we go to take a snapshot, and then let's turn off our IPR and let's say we're going to our final render. So we'll let our final render resolve here and see what that looks like. So let's take another quick snapshot of this render and let's toggle between the two. And you'll notice that these are completely different colors. So they are random, but unfortunately the IPR and the final render have different uh, colors applied to different parts. So it becomes very difficult to art direct your scene. And that's where this new jitter node comes in handy. There's a lot of different ways to use the new jitter node, but this is one application which is really helpful. So we'll take our new jitter node and we're gonna take the output and put it into the color of that standard material. So just out of the gate, we can see that we have a random color being applied to all of these different components. And under the input ID mode, we only have three options for this one, user data, name ID, and object ID. So name ID is basically if anything in this hierarchy has a different name, then it's going to be given a different color. So because these are all named differently, they're all different colors. If we were to rename this one to 33, like the one below it, these two would now have the same color. So that's how that works. Or you can change this to uh, object ID. If you change it to object ID, if we right click on all of these and go to render tags, RS object, if we go to the object ID tab in this tag, you can click override and now it is going to be looking at this object ID number. Now they're all set to zero, so it all has the same color, but if we were to take one of these and change the ID to a different number, that one piece will be now uh, given a different color. So you can manually go in here and specify which ones you want to have the same color. So that's another way that you could use this. But we'll just delete the tags for now and we'll go back into name ID since that works for us. One thing I don't like about this ramp gradient is that it goes to complete black. You can change that by changing the value variation min and just bring that up a bit and then it's not gonna go all the way to black. And the cool thing about this node is we have all the color information in here. So we can change the hue and we can change the saturation. Uh, what you can do with the hue min is just start going through here and picking a hue that you like. And if you take the hue min and max so that they are the same, it's gonna give you that color range. So if we kind of move these in conjunction with each other, you can pick a sort of a color palette that is uniform. But if you bring these apart from each other, it's gonna give you a broader range of the hue possibilities. And then you can also play with the seed as well. And then if we wanna have an increase in the saturation, we can do that with our min and max saturation. You can drop that down or you can increase it quite a bit and get more of a saturated look. All right, so this is looking fine. Let's take a snapshot right now, and then let's turn off our IPR and let's render out the final output. All right, so we made another snapshot and let's toggle between these two and you can see that they are perfectly identical. So now whatever you have showing up using the jitter node in your IPR is going to be the same in the final output, which is a huge benefit if you are trying to art direct your colors. So that is the jitter node. There are a bunch of options in here and you can use this for quite a few other things, but this is one application where it is a great update over the user color data node. Make sure to head over to thepixelab.net, join our newsletter and you can get access to this free camera model as well as the other 400. 
Hope you all found something useful out of that tutorial and we'll talk to you next time. Ciao.